Hey, hey, welcome to Weapons Education. As you can tell, I just got home from work and I'm doing this on the fly. I checked my PC real, real quick and I had about 15 to 18 uh, requests to do a hurricane preparedness video. So I just want to give you my two cents because I've lived in Florida for over 30 years. Before I get into that, um, I want to tell you what I, how I'm dressed today and what I, different things I wear when I go to work. And I just want to show you, in the last two hours, I just printed up this news article. Uh, within five miles of where I'm standing at my home, armed robber with a ski mask pulls a gun at the Walgreens or right up the road. Um, successfully robs the place, gets out. Same guy, within one hour, goes to a 7-Eleven, uh, like a mile away from here, and robs the joint and, and gets away, put a gun to people's heads. So. You just never know. So this is what I wore today. This is I didn't I didn't change at all. I just walked in, right? My wife's watching. Yep, We're going to talk about the hurricane story in a minute. But uh, I when I'm kind of wearing my suit, I like to have my uh, my shoulder holster. And uh, lately, I've been carrying my Glock 29, my 10 millimeter, with um, two spare magazines over here. And I do carry in my pocket, you know, just in case. I I just like this gun. This little spare 357 Magnum. J frame, it's the um, 340 CT model. I just I love this one. Okay, and then for a knife today, I carried. You know I love my Espada. The extra, um, the large Espada. This is the large. They make the medium, the large, and the extra large. And you know what? I'm not sure, but I think they stopped making them. Um, I had PMs for knife orders uh, in the last two days and sold about I don't know 10, 12 knives. And a lot of people say, well, I want one of the Espadas, and the best size is the large. The extra large is too big, and medium is cool. So I can't find the larges. I called Cold Steel. We don't have them right now. Call all the distributors. We don't have them right now. So I'm not sure if they just stopped making the large. This is the beautiful high-end Espada. They have the G10 versions, the lower end. But I'm just letting you know, Cold Steel can pull them off the market, and just, that's it. They're gone. I'm glad I got a bunch of them myself, personally, as a collectible now. All right, so that's what I wore today. Now let's talk about hurricane preparedness or any natural disaster preparedness. Now I don't, I don't have all my supplies here. Um, I have a whole section in my home of, of a couple of boxes that I keep with um, the supplies I'm about to speak to you about. But I want to tell you a story because living in Florida for 30 years, I've had you know all these different hurricanes coming in, but one major direct hit. And all the hurricanes, what I've always done, right? This is my wife, and we've been together since 1993, a long time. What would we do? We ran from every hurricane, right? We, before we had kids, it was just you and I. We got in the car, and we just, just we at the bottom of the peninsula, you don't know where to go. Is it going to hit the south part, the middle, the top? So you just start driving north and trying to get out of the state and trying to go inland, like towards Tennessee. And every hurricane, I dodged. And then when we had children, I had I have an RV, the motorhome. We got in the motorhome, right? And we dodged, mm -hmm. and we just kept <laughs> just laughing. We remember? And yes. now Hurricane Francis, I remember that one. We were so worried, it ended up hitting just north of, of our home. But all, they all missed. And that was, but we, I always got out of the way, and I'm glad I did, because I saw the areas that were hit totally, just absolutely devastated. These things are like 50-mile-wide tornadoes coming at you. Do not underestimate it. Um, for instance, Hurricane Wilma, that we did not get out of the way, only one we did not get out of the way, well, it's coming from Mexico towards Florida, so it's heading east, and that hurricane at one point in time when it was over Mexico is still rated as the most powerful hurricane ever in this district of the world, this hemisphere. Um, I don't know, I forget, it was a Cat 5, but it was so powerful. And, but then as it came towards Florida from Mexico, they said it's, it's diminishing, which it was, and it went to like a number three, and then they said, well, it's going to hit the west coast of Florida as a two, and this is a 10 p.m. at night. I luckily had some guy talk me into putting up the metal shutters on my house. We, our daughter was uh, 60 days old, right honey, remember? And none of the neighbors really even put hurricane shutters up. Luckily this guy talked me into it because he wanted to make a couple of bucks. And I thought, it's, they're saying it's going to be a tropical storm when it hits us. Uh, his name is Juan, and I said, all right Juan, just uh, put them up, all right, you know, you're better off safe than sorry. Oh boy. That hurricane intensified and ended up being um, a three, almost a four. But these numbers, if it's a, if it's a three or four, I mean, hey, these are massive, powerful storms. The pressure is so low. 
the, the house, I can't explain to you what a scary feeling it was, um, that the metal shutters, it was a six hour storm that hit at 6 a.m. and um, a lot of people died, including our neighbor, two doors away, right? Mm -hmm. Heart attack. The fear alone uh, will, will, could, could damage people's health. So uh, what happened was the people who didn't put shutters up, they lost the interior of their homes, the roof blew off, and a lot of them got sucked out of their house and, and died. Because what happened was that because it hit South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, basically direct, right over our house, the eye of the storm went right over our house, and uh, they don't want tourism to be affected. So like the country didn't wasn't aware of the true damage that Hurricane Wilma did. But you know you can Google images. You know look, look at images uh, like Google Hurricane Andrew and go to images. Google Hurricane Ivan, go to images. You can realize what, how powerful these storms are. So do not underestimate it. And this is true, of course, we can't plan for an earthquake if you're in any region of the world. As we know now, a lot of areas are more vulnerable than we realize. Uh, but you should have some type of preparedness in case you lose power. And I'm just going to give you my two cents. Now, I'm going to probably put another video up later. So this is not going to run all that long as a feature video. If you know anybody that lives in the path of this storm, I think it's South Carolina North. Uh, you may want to have them watch this video. I put a list together here of, um, of what I think you should do. And I'm going to just kind of move brief so I don't, I don't bore you. But you want to have um, um, Ziploc bags. I'm just going to talk randomly because you remember, you're not going to have power. You're not going to have ice. You know, the whole thing about um, gasoline is true. You want to make sure your cars are all full of gas. And what happened with this hurricane uh, after it lasted six hours, and I just can't tell you how scary it was. It was it, it, I felt like I was a, a wooden ship at sea, and that you can hear the trusses in the roof creaking. <laughs> and you can, and I was we were I was laying on the ground. Uh, the baby was in a closet. Um, we, my wife and I were both huddled in the closet on the ground with her. And we, I was just waiting for the roof to implode and come off because I heard the shutters, these steel shutters that are bolted into the concrete, go <laughs> come pop up, <laughs> flying off the back window, right? And our little cat was sitting there, just staring out the window like nothing was going on. <laughs> that was kind of funny. But it was massive. What happened was we get out, the next out of it, about noon or so, 1 o'clock, you walk outside, we talk about these zombie videos. Everyone was literally walking around like, like zombies. Really, Everyone was in shock, remember? And that's how it was the first day. And people were trying to help each other. You can barely walk. The roof tiles are everywhere, trees that were there for 200 years are gone. It was just totally devastated. Even if you had gas in your car, you couldn't drive because the roads were just covered with a foot of debris. So the, the first day, people were honestly like in shock, just like, like deer with headlights. Just you couldn't believe it. Uh, then the second day, we started helping each other out, like we should. But the third day, people started getting a little weird. Now they started to get aggravated. It's kind of hot. It was October um, 05, South Florida. It was hot, and uh, now by the fifth, sixth day, it started to be dangerous. So um, you're going to want to have. Um, I showed you that bag last week. Put together some sort of duffel bag with your firearms, um, because I'm telling you, people were looting into houses, but after one week they were getting desperate, they were going crazy. After 10 days of no power, no electricity, there were gangs being formed up in different cities. Um, they were realizing which houses were vacant, and if they also realized which houses might have money in them, and they were robbing them because the police weren't enough force, uh, it was bad. Um, there was um, just total, total chaos, and um, everyone had to go in by sundown. There was a curfew, but they weren't following the curfews. So you do want to have your firearms, that's obvious, you want to have enough ammo, and you want to put it in a place that can't be blown away, like a safe that's bolted down to the ground. Okay, um, household bleach to purify your water, because you won't be able to drink your water. And this is all for a month. A duct tape is always good for a number of different reasons. A flashlight for everyone in the household, and a lot of batteries. Now you could get an outdoor generator, and we had one. And the problem with it is it was a big giant one. I, I went and bought it. Um, I still have it. It's huge. It's, it's a big Honda. I, I, it was like $3,000. I said, all right, I, I, got, I got this great, this great generator. And it was so loud in the driveway. I mean, the, and the, the, the fumes, the carbon monoxide, the, and, the, and we ran out of gasoline. 
And I, I had about, you know, about five, five gallon jug. I had 25 gallon spares. And then you think you might have gasoline in your car, but then the new modern day ones, it's kind of tough to siphon gasoline out to, to put into your generator. So if you know of a product to siphon gas out of a car to get it into a generator, that's just an idea I just came up with because that was a problem with us. So the generator after, after three or four days was useless because it was out of fuel. Um, and then the gas stations had no power and you couldn't get gas and then people were going crazy. If you could get gas, they were limiting you to two gallons per car. People were cutting each other in lines after a week, seven, eight days. Fights were breaking out. People were getting stabbed. People were getting robbed. It gets bad. Be prepared. My best advice I can give you is get out of the way of the storm. Don't try to protect your home. Right now, start boarding up. Uh, I know you're not accustomed to it in this part of the country all that much. And you might say, well, it's going to be a three or a two, and it's not going to be all that bad. It might go out in the ocean. Get the plywood. I'm sorry if it's going to cost you money, but if, if one of your, any, any one of your windows gets blown out or gets hit with a projectile and the air gets in there, your roof goes off like an umbrella, just like that. And even if it's just a gust, uh, a quick 100 mile an hour gust, normal, a normal, uh, let's say a, a two storm, but there's little tornadoes that have gusts of 100, 130 miles an hour, and one of those flies over your house and um, pops a window open, the pressure's so low, the whole house implodes, and every window implodes all at once. It's not good. So, get out of the way. Please start driving now to higher ground inland. I, that's my advice, is to board up your home, and that's my best advice. Other things you want to think about, a fire extinguisher, uh, matches, you know, wood matches, uh, battery powered radio with a lot of extra batteries. A charcoal or grass grill, grill is huge and um, keep in mind that your food in the freezer is not going not gonna to last so you may want to think about dry ice, that's an option to throw in your freezer right before the storm hits because you're going to lose power for plan on a month. You, if this thing is what it is and it goes direct and hits a bullseye and let's say South Carolina the first 10, 12, 15 miles in you're going to have some issues like I did. Um, let's see, uh, uh, disposable plastic gloves because of you want, everything is, you know, you want to stay clean. Um, a hand operated can opener, you want to have a lot of canned foods. It's going to be like camping, it's not going to be fun, but you got to be prepared. Soap, toiletries, medications for a month, um, toilet paper, a lot of toilet paper. You just got to think of these things. Um, your medications, I said that already, you need medications, mosquito repellent, um, disposable uh, diapers, you know, if you have children, think of all the things you need for your children, your pets, that's huge, you have to really think about your pets, what could happen, um, if, if you have to evacuate, situations where some places, some uh, places where you would go to evacuate to, like a high school or something, they don't allow your pets, so you have to plan for what to do with your pets now, make sure you have food for a month, and um, garbage bags, ties, and your cell phone, let me give you a tip on the cell phone, what I learned is get a, a, I'm sure you already got one, most people do, is a smartphone, and the reason being is you're going to lose your cell phone service, you're not going to have internet service on your phone, but you might get texting, and we got our texting back in like four days, we didn't get cell phones for like two weeks because all the towers got wiped out, but the texting for some, some reason, I'm not really too up on that, works, it doesn't take as much bandwidth. So, you know, obviously have a cell phone that a text, and you want to have all your friends in there, obviously, so you can let them know you're safe or, or if you're not safe. Um, uh, and then read your insurance documents now, know the exact phone number to call in case you have to file a claim right away. And also cash. Cash, cash, cash. ATMs aren't going to work. Just, to, just assume on the worst. I hope this doesn't hit anybody. That's my quick little take on hurricane preparedness. Number one is get out of the board up your home and get out because don't take it lightly. People die, a lot of people die, and the numbers that are reported about deaths in Florida hurricanes are downgraded because of tourism. They don't want the truth to come out. Hurricane Andrew, Google Hurricane Andrew, and look at the images. Google Hurricane Ivan, look at the images, and you'll see what these things could do. They're, it's just amazing how powerful the Earth is. So. All right, checking out. I'm going to do the FN video later. Bye-bye.